Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Uh, let me please welcome to the stage the co-writer, executive producer, and director of the Night of, Steve Zalian. Thanks for doing this, Steve. Sure. Um, I feel like what we just watched was a theatrical film rather than a television show. Why is that? Um, probably because I don't know how to make television. I've, um, you know, I've spent my life writing and making movies, and it's it's really it's really all I know. Um, so, you know, when we started on this, when Richard Price and I started on this, he's, he's a lot like I am. He basically works in films. And um, we wrote it like a film, meaning, um, you know, we didn't farm it out to a bunch of writers. We didn't have a writer's room. Uh, we didn't start shooting until all the scripts were written. Um, and, uh, and then after it was shot, we, you know, I, I edited it with one editor. So, you know, uh, that along with the fact that there's um, <clears throat> a lot of production uh, department heads who are also feature people, that's what we know how to do. So that's probably why it looks like a movie. And, and you started your, I learned during the course of the making of this that you started your f career as a film editor. How has that impacted your writing and your filmmaking? Um, well, let's start by saying by film editor, you mean I've worked on some films with titles like Kingdom of the Spiders. So, I mean, they, <laughs> they weren't exactly great films, but uh, a lot of B films, horror films. Um, but I think what I learned, you know, I would have learned if I'd been working on, you know, more legitimate films. Uh, one thing is that you can generally, I felt this when I was working on these films, you could generally throw out the first reel. Um, like the first 10 minutes of any film, and it would still work. I, I, which is what we did today. Which is today. what we just did. <laughs> yeah. Now, we actually, uh, we, I threw out on this one, I mean, I think probably just about 15 minutes of story before this uh, clip starts. Um, originally, it was quite a bit more than that. So I, I threw out 10 minutes at the beginning uh, <laughs> myself. But, you know, and it's because I think that it, it happens with a lot of writers, and I, I was very conscious of this when I started writing, when I went from editing to writing. You know, you're, you as a writer is, are trying to get to understand who the characters are. You're starting from scratch. And you tend to want to start pretty early so you know what their voice is, you know how they behave, you know how they act. Um, and what I realized at a certain point is that that's fine to get to know them, but then throw it all out, you know, and start the plot. and you really don't need to understand who a character is in, until the end of the story. You don't need to know at the beginning. And it's often more interesting if you know very little about them and you see the, who they are as a character, what they are in the course of the story as opposed to before the story starts. So that's one thing. Um, another thing I think was that, you know, as, as an editor, you're always trying to make things shorter. You're trying to, uh, Usually things have been overshot or scenes are too long. You're trying to make them a little bit more concise. And I took that to the writing too. I, I write a lot of short scenes. I don't write a lot of you know, five page dialogue scenes. Um, and, that, and that writing is often, there's no dialogue. I mean, you saw that in this. I mean, there's, we go for about 10 minutes and there's virtually no dialogue. And you know, some people forget that that's, I mean, that's not the director you know, necessarily, that's, that was written. And, and, you know, so I'm, I'm very conscious of that. Some of my, the favorite, my favorite things that I've written are, are things that don't have dialogue. Um, when, when we received the director, your director's cut of, of these episodes, they had the most sophisticated sound design of any <clears throat> director's cut I'd ever heard. How, uh, describe how you work with sound in, in, in putting a film together? Um, I mean, I think I, I, I start out just like everybody else. I mean, I start out with, with just the sound, with just the production sound. It's a rough cut. And then I, I actually, on this, I, I told the post-production supervisor I wanted to hire you know, a sound editor before we turned in the rough cut. And um, she said, well, we don't, we don't really do that. And I said, I think it's really important because, again, a lot of the storytelling is done not with dialogue. It's done with, with sound. 
uh, and sometimes with music. And uh, uh, you know, so it is important. I, I think that it's it's hard for anybody to judge something with just a production sound. It's hard for me to judge it. Um, and then, you know, I, I music I think can be overused. And I, as I'm watching this, uh, uh, this this clip that we just showed, when the music finally came in. I felt like, oh man, we really didn't need any music there, <laughs> you know. And the the whole sequence from the time he discovers the body until he arrives at the precinct was all scored. And I don't mean just like attempt score. I mean we scored it. And it wasn't until I was in the mix that I and we had all the sound in. I said, let's just take it out. And uh, Michael Berry, the the sound mixer said, how much of it? And I said, all of it. Let's just take it all out. And I think it's fine, you know? I'm really happy it's not there. Um, how, how important is realism to you um, as, a, as, a, as a, a kind of definitional matter and as a, a, a kind of a, a naturalistic matter? I mean, it's my thing. I mean, it's the thing that I'm, I'm drawn to. Uh, I love documentaries. I love nonfiction. A lot of the films I've written have been nonfiction films, stories. I mean, so I like it. And then in terms of the, the telling of it, it's just a matter of trying to do it in a way that, that feels naturalistic. I mean, the great thing about doing a show like this is um, I, was, I have the time to be able to do what you just saw. I mean, in most films, that's not... It's going to get cut. I mean, we, we, we have nine hours to go, so I, it was okay to you know to spend some real time, and I felt that you needed to in order to to feel what this kid was feeling, you know, to get to, to really feel it, um, and so this sense of real time and uh, and shooting in a naturalistic way is really important to me. When I when I started, the first film that I directed was shot by the great Conrad Hall, um, you know, the DP who was famous for that. I mean, he, he, he basically invented a style of naturalistic shooting using, he didn't always use natural light, but it looked like natural light. And that was, that was the whole, uh, his whole thing. And in a kind of a, an attitude towards um, shooting, which was, you know, don't plan it all out. You know, don't have storyboards. Um, you know, see what the actors do figure out where the best place is to put the camera after you see the rehearsal rather than tell the actors to hit, hit a mark. And I didn't know anything, so I, you know, my first film, so I relied on him a lot and, and, and took that to heart and, and basically have kept doing that ever since. Um, and uh, on this one, uh, a lot of what you saw was shot by Robert Ellsworth, who is a you know, world-class cinematographer and works with P.T. Anderson a lot and uh, a lot of other people. And I, I actually noticed one thing that Robert does a lot is he works with writer-directors a lot. He works with Tony Gilroy, he works with others, P.T. Anderson, and it's, it's interesting. I'm one, I wonder if it's an accident or not. But, and this was his first film, by the way, uh, his first television show, too. So, you know, we were all new to it. Uh, I, I imagine that your treatment of New York in this fits into the this idea of realism. Can you talk a bit about the treatment of New York in the, in the series? Well, I mean, shooting on the streets of New York, uh, you know, was, was, was crucial. Shooting at night was important. This, this was shot, this was the, you know, part of the pilot, which was a little shorter. I think the pilot was about an hour, an hour, and this, this version is about an hour and 15 minutes. But 17 of the 22 days were shot at night um, uh, on the streets of New York. We, we took over that street where we shot all the stuff out in front of the brownstone for like four consecutive weekends. And um, uh, it's fantastic shooting in New York. I mean, we shot everywhere. We shot in Harlem, we shot in Chinatown, we shot at the courthouse, we shot in, you know, the Queens House of Detention. We, I mean, we shot, I'd say we shot everywhere except the places that, you know, a lot of people shoot. We didn't shoot at Central Park. <laughs> I didn't shoot the Empire State Building, <laughs> but we, I mean, we shot in the Lower East Side, and it, it's just fantastic. I mean, it's fantastic to, to have the actors in these real plays. I mean, how could you do it otherwise, you know? Um, um, it, uh, it also evokes uh, a lot of the films 
of the 70s. Um, what are some of the films that inspired you in, in, in crafting this? Um, well, I started out, I mean, the fir my first kind of, you know, introduction to film was in college, and, and, and I had a teacher who showed us, you know, Italian neorealist films, Godard, Truffaut, you know, the, the, the obvious ones, um, and, and the Maisel brothers. And, and, and so you look at those films, I, I responded to all of those films, and I think for the same reason, that they had a sense of realism, and they had that kind of, you know, some of them were out and out cinema verite, and others, you know, were shot handheld on the street, and I, I just really responded to that. And then in the 70s, you know, um, Sidney Lumet, um, Serpico, Dog Day Afternoon, of course, you know, Friedkin's French Connection. I, listen, I love those films. I mean, who doesn't? And, um, and you know, so to be able to shoot in New York with a, a story involving, you know, police and crime, um, you know, I very much wanted to, to, you know, to try to try to evoke that. It, 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 in, in watching it and in watching it now, it, it occurred to me that we've forgotten that vision, that view of New York, because our perspective on New York is kind of inundated with law and order, law, you know, all the law and order shows uh -huh. and the kind of television that, that, that takes us there. Right. And it's nice to be transported back into a grittier, more realistic. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not familiar with those shows. I mean, I, 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 I don't think I've ever seen a Law and Order, but I know what you're talking about. I think I know what you're talking about. And, and to me, it's, it's always, you know, the process of how things work is really, has is, is always interested me. You know, I wrote about Oliver, Oliver Sacks because I was interested in, you know, neurology and chess. I didn't know anything about chess and, and learned about it and learned about the process. And, and with this, honestly, I, you know, there's only two ways to really know what it's like when you get arrested, and that's to get arrested or do a lot of research, you know. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but at the details of, you know, this is one part of the story, which is the arrest, and it goes on. This is just the beginning of the arrest. Um, you know, following a, a story, you know, through the process of arrest, police, uh, arraignments, you know, formal arraignments, held in Rikers Island, courtrooms, lawyers, all of those things are the, the details and the, uh, I don't think you, you don't always see or you don't see them the way they are. I mean, if you go down to the courthouse and hang out there and, and I, I think everybody should if they haven't, go see what it's like to go to arraignment court, you won't believe it. I mean, it's like nothing I've ever seen in television. Uh, so anyway, every step of the way I felt that way and um, and, and, and I was fascinated by it. So I hope, I hope other people think it's interesting. How, uh, how long did it take to make this? Um, five years. I mean, again, p part of the reason for that is because you guys at HBO let us make it like a film. Um, that meant that we didn't start shooting. I mean, I shot a pilot kind of in a traditional way. But once the series was ordered, uh, Richard and I spent like the next year working on, on the scripts. And we didn't, I didn't start shooting the second episode of this until all the scripts were done, rewritten, ready to go. I mean, we were ready to go. And then we had one crew, so we weren't you know, piggybacking and setting up one episode when you know, we're shooting. We cross-boarded a lot of it. And, we were, and that takes time, you know, I mean, it takes time to do that. And then in the, in the, in the um, post-production, uh, as I mentioned, we, we, had, we had one editing crew and, and me. And that, you know, let's be honest, it took a year. And, um, and I think that's probably longer than most of your post-productions are, I would guess. It, it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, why, don't, why don't you share with everyone uh, a sense of what we can expect from the rest of the series? I, um, you know, more of the same. I mean, I, I think that it's, uh, I, I'm not, not going to say where the story goes, but in terms of kind of the attention to, to I don't know, sense of place and, and moment and detail, you know, which I, I hope came across in, the, in this clip, you know, the whole show sort of takes that approach. 
and, um, uh, and John Turturro. You get to see John Turturro, yeah, who is fantastic. Um, I, uh, we have about five minutes left, so um, if anyone has any questions based on what you've seen or what you've heard, please feel free to ask. Back over your career, from a writing standpoint, uh, is there any particular projects that stick out to you or that maybe were your favorite projects that you worked on? Um, for writing or, yeah. Specifically, yeah. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, I think that, you know, some of them um, um, probably turned out more like I had hoped they would than others. I, I mean, cer certainly Schindler's List was a great you know, a, a, a great story to work on, and I was happy with the way it turned out. I think Searching for Bobby Fischer might be my, my, my favorite because it was so personal to me. Um, not that the story itself was personal, but I had a kid who was eight years old, which is the same age as, as, as the kid in the story, and I felt it was a universal story, so I was writing about things that, um, you know, that I felt. Um, and. Um, uh, and also, I was writing about something I didn't know anything about, as I mentioned, and that was that was really exciting. And and it and that particular script, I think, had a I don't know. I think it's probably because I was younger and less um, critical of my own work that I was able to sort of you know write it and not overanalyze it and not write it to death. Um, you know, which sometimes happens, you know, more later later in one's career. You get you, you you get kind of like I, I don't know unsatisfied with with it or you feel like you've done it before so you have to do something different and that one you know just kind of uh, uh, I, I was happy with it as soon as I was done with it and then to be able to direct it was great because I you know I, I, I could you know do it the way I wanted yeah down in front right here uh, the question is for Carrie and it's I was hoping that he would speak a little bit to the kinds of stories HBO feels lends themselves best to this format. Um, distinctive stories that feel cinematic, but that also um, have a sense of inviting the audience back for successive episodes. Um, you know, that, that's really what distinguishes what I do from what Len does. Len's, Len's films are self-contained and the things that we work on feel like they need more than two hours to, two, two, two and a half hours to tell, properly tell the story and invite and, and, and compel the audience to come back for a second, third, eighth night. Um, how do you, when you're deciding on the limited series model, does, do you write to, like does the writer write to what they feel is natural and then you work with them to determine the length or do you really look at the idea and then decide on the length and write to the length or does it vary? Uh, I, I mean, in this, I mean it, in this case is fairly typical. The, the writer writes what he feels is the appropriate length to tell the story, the appropriate number of episodes. I mean, in this case, we didn't really know where episodes ended at, at no. any given point. No. So we, you know, and we, we read and we discuss what feels superfluous, what feels critical. Um, we edit the, you know, Steve edits the scripts as tightly as he can and then the process begins again when you get into editorial and you're, you're essentially right. rewriting the scripts in the editing room. And I mean, this, I don't know if you recall all, you know, kind of the changes that went through this, uh, with this, but um, when, when I started, I had it laid out as a 10 episode um, show. It just seemed, you know, that's how my outline laid out. And, and you guys said, it's gotta be seven. I don't know if you remember that. And then <laughs> seven. No, I seven. Um, and, uh, and then um, 
when I find I wrote it I wrote it as eight. That was the best I could do. I couldn't write it as seven. I wrote it as eight, or rewrote it as eight with Richard, and um, and you guys said fine. I don't even know why you said seven the first time, but you said fine. <laughs> and, and, it's and, called negotiation. Okay, <laughs> at least it wasn't nine, right? <laughs> yeah. And then when, when, like you say, when it was edited, then I, I came back to you and I said, you know, it's like the, it, the beginning is it's not an hour. It's like an hour and 20 minutes. And, and the last one's like an hour and 20 minutes. And you said, fine. So that's the great thing is, you know, it, it, it was allowed to be, to, to kind of have the structure that it, that it wanted. You guys let it be that way. So that's great. Great. Thank um, you. I think that's all the time we have. Thank you very much for, for being here and for having us here. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>